Hello everyone and welcome to another Atomic Mass Transmissions Live! I'm Will Schick, Director of Product Development for Atomic Mass Games. I'm excited that you can be here with me. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I hope that everything's been going really well and that you've been really enjoying uh, spring, wherever spring may be for y'all. Uh, I'm definitely enjoying the nicer-ish weather that we're having in the Seattle area. So that's been really cool, especially because it is baseball season and I'm spending a lot of time outside for my kids. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and dive into what we're actually here to do today, which is to paint a carnage. That's right. Uh, we showed this bad mamma jamma off during the mini extravaganza event, which happened, feels like forever ago, but was only like a month ago, uh, for our first ever mini extravaganza. Um, really excited for this character. Uh, definitely a labor of love, somebody that we've been working on for a long, long time, actually since the start of developing the game. Carnage was there. He's always been there in our hearts and our, in our souls. Uh, but now he's finally coming to the game this summer. So we're going to put some paint on this, uh, this absolute combat monster. We're going to talk a little bit about his development and all of that good stuff. And hopefully we'll get inspired for when Carnage hits the shelves at your local game store uh, for you to be ready to paint uh, Cletus Casty himself, the symbiotic serial killer. Uh, before we dive in, though, I do have some exciting news about the month of May. Um, we kind of mentioned this on the last game stream last week, uh, where Dallas and I threw down the Brotherhood versus the Uncanny X, where we showed off Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, and um, Mr. Sinister. If you missed that stream, go, sh go check it out. The game was amazing. It was down to the wire. It was bloody as heck. Uh, lots of people got dazed and KO'd. Uh, we got to see the new characters do a lot of really cool stuff, and a lot of the oldie uh, veteran characters like Wolverine and stuff really shine as well. It was just a blast. I'm really happy we're back in the office being able to play again on stream and all that good stuff. Uh, it's a good breath of fresh air after a year of just pretty much straight hobbying. Of course, I love getting on the painting table as well. That said, this May, we're actually going to be doing a really cool uh, live event, effectively, let's call it that, where Dallas and I have selected five uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol characters. I'm going to put mine up on the screen for you right now. This is the aforementioned Team Shick. So I chose these five Marvel Crisis Protocol characters. Uh, you'll notice that five is not ten, so we need five more characters. Uh, what you all are going to be doing on the streams and through Instagram is you get the chance to help us select the rest of our team through voting. Um, so I picked Venom, Enchantress, Medusa, Gamora, and Taskmaster as my first five. These are my core five that I'm going to build everything else around, and you're going to decide uh, what the next four characters are going to be over the course of the next couple weeks. During the month of May, Dallas and I are going to be painting our new teams that we have had selected for us, half by ourselves, half by the community. Uh, on stream, we're going to be painting together, talking about our choices, what's going on. We're going to do some fun hobby stuff with this to unify the whole roster together, make it feel really thematic and appropriate. And then at the end of the month, once everything is painted and ready to go, we're going to actually sit down and we're going to throw down a game and we're going to see which team, Team Schick or Team Dallas, comes out on top uh, through this whole process. We very much encourage you all to play at home uh, and join us on this adventure as we get a roster together in, in a single month. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Kind of the reasoning behind my choices for what I picked here, I have no, I have no master plan. Um, I picked characters that I really enjoy in the game, uh, characters that I really like to play, and characters that I thought would be really fun to paint in a unique color scheme uh, that would tie everything together. So I'm looking to you, chat, and uh, the MCP community to really give me, give me a purpose. Give, give this team a direction that they need to go. Um, it could be no direction at all. We could play completely affiliationless. We could get no leaders. Uh, we could just play with the cool cats of Marvel Crisis Protocol. Doesn't really matter to me, but the decision is now in your hand. So the first pick will happen at the end of this stream based on the comments that are happening right now. So if you want to have an impact immediately on my sixth choice for my roster, uh, you can start posting in the chat about who you think should be on the team Schick for slot number six and why. Uh, after this, we're going to have uh, some Instagram posts go up. On Instagram, uh, in the story, there's going to be a poll. You're effectively going to get another chance to be able to pick the second character. And then in about halfway through May, uh, at another stream, we're going to do a whole other pick again. So with that in mind, um, be thinking about that. I'm going to put this uh, graphic up a couple times as we paint for the folks who come in later or anything like that. But my fate is in your hands. I've chosen my core five. It is now up to you, chat, and the MCP community to determine who slot six will be, and then later on on Instagram uh, for you all to choose again for slot seven. 
who knows what we're going to get? Who knows if we're going to have a team? I don't know. I'm just really excited to get paint on these characters to do something really fun and unique. And I'm excited to see how the story for this roster evolves as more selections are made throughout the process. So with that, I'm going to move this camera off of me. We're going to move it on to the star of our show. And we're going to get to painting. So you can see here, I did a little bit of prep work on our carnage. We actually have more of a scream look going on right now uh, with the orange and the yellow. <clears throat> so uh, basically what I've done is I created, I did the Zenith Prime. And then because I knew this was going to take a while and there's really only one color to do on carnage, which is red, um, I wanted to get kind of the base layer undertone done, which is, was a really light wash of orange. Um, so this is an orange ink with a bit of yellow mixed in. And this is going to kind of provide us a nice undertone for our red. And to do the red, we're going to do a really classic technique that we always do. I'm going to be using this Model Air Red from Vallejo, which is actually an airbrush color. Um, but it works out really great for doing washing effects with because it's already pre-thinned. So you don't have to add a whole lot of medium or anything to it. It's kind of already at that perfect consistency. A little bit of water. I find it has great coverage. Uh, works really well with the Zenith Prime highlight technique. Um, we've done a lot of different colors with it before but I just wanted to do something a little different add that undertone to it um, so that we could get a really bright and vibrant color obviously red really likes to be highlighted with yellow if you want it to be really fiery and intense and then we can always go back through if we need to uh, depending on how this turns out if it's a little too bright we can start deepening in the shadows because he has a lot of black symbiote like goo kind of striping all over his body I thought going really bright with the red would be fun um, plus, for me, Carnage really has that uh, super bright kind of blood red feel. So I wanted to amp up the colors a lot on this character and just really make him pop. And I figured playing with this undertone would be kind of a fun, different way to paint red, which we've done a lot on the stream, where normally we just kind of go in over that basic zenith with the airbrush color. Um, and you can see how playing with undertones really can change the overall values of the paints that you're using. It can be used to really create uh, highlights and shadows much quicker. Like, for example, if I wanted a more deep red for this carnage, if I wanted him to look more crimson gore style, I would have used, say, a Holder Blue. There you go. There's your one mention for it. Because I don't think we're bringing it out for the rest of this one. Uh, I could use the Holder Blue wash over the Zenith Prime. And blue, of course, is a really great natural shade to red. And that would have really deepened the colors and brought it down quite a bit. Um, to be more of that crimson gore, like the dried blood kind of feel. Uh, and I think that would be a really great approach for Carnage as well. I was just feeling the really bright poppy colors today. I wanted to play with something that was really, really saturated, um, very vibrant, you know, super menacing. And the yellow undertone, to me, really spoke to something that was going to bring out that kind of color that I wanted. So you can already see how, because the red is stretching over, uh, in terms of a wash, it's pooling in those recesses, which is really great. So we're building up a really nice solid red in the deepest crevices. And then everywhere where it kind of stretches over, we're getting more of that yellow showing through. So it's working like a filter. And basically we're putting a red filter over a yellow foundation, which is of course giving us a nice bright orangey kind of red highlight. Uh, and we're just gonna keep playing with those colors and see where we wind up. Let's see, what does the chat have to do going out there? I know. Well, I gotta say Hold Your Blue at least four times for the sponsors. Hold Your Blue. Definitely the sponsor of this show. Um, so yeah, so what what can we do here? I'm gonna bring this graphic back up so folks in the chat. So there we go. So here are our characters that we have going on for our May challenge, which is gonna be Team Schick versus Team Dallas. Uh, you're all here, so we all know which team you're already on. So thank you. Thank you for joining uh, Team Schick. You're on the right side of the law. But Venom, obviously uh, a really awesome character, one of my all-time favorites. I don't have a Carnage shirt, so I'm wearing my Venom shirt today just to represent for the symbiotes. Um, didn't seem right to wear a Spider-Man shirt today, so we didn't. But I think Venom brings a lot of muscle and punch to the team. He definitely plays to my more brutal favored way of playing, which is to just go punch other people in the face. Still has some good positional um, tricks, thanks to that web snare. Of course, is extremely durable and tanky with his healing. Uh, we'll see what Dallas brings in terms of energy weapons and stuff. We don't have a bodyguard yet, so, you know, maybe that's a problem, maybe it's not. I don't know. Uh, 
certainly Venom's weakness is something that you can play around uh, once you know how to use him. And our team tactic cards will also come into play there as well. So I'm really excited to get Venom. I'm also super excited to paint another Venom. I've actually only ever painted one Venom, which seems crazy to say. Um, and I'm really looking forward to doing a different version of Venom. So Venom's there. Uh, Enchantress was probably is there because I had so much fun designing that character when we added uh, when we when we decided to add her to the game. Um, that I just I had to I had to put her in. I don't get to play enough games with Enchantress. This seemed like a really great excuse to bring her out on the table. But uh, as much as I love punching people in the face, I also love like you know characters that just manipulate and ruin other people's plans. So I like I like playing spoiler characters kind of where it's like oh I have this great idea and you're like well here's an Enchantress. I guess it's not going to work out that way. I also really love the miniature. Like, just a great looking character. Had a lot of fun painting the first one that I did. Um, and have a lot of really great inspiration from Dallas's stream where he painted his Enchantress in kind of that goth rock girl look, which I just feel like fits that character so well. So I think there's a lot of opportunity from the hobby perspective, depending on the final roster composition, uh, to have some real fun with that costume. And then as far as Medusa, another one of my favorite characters. Have we decided on crisis cards? We have not. In fact, I don't even know if we get to decide on crisis cards yet. Uh, BK hasn't really told us how crisis cards are going to go. I know we get to pick our tactic cards, so I assume we get to pick crisis cards as well uh, in some manner. But we're kind of going into the roster construction blind uh, in terms of just like what to expect, what the other person has. I know what Dallas's core five are. Obviously, we'll all learn what they are on stream as well. But it's really, it's so much of it's up in the air now because the chat gets to decide. Oh yeah, Medusa, another powerhouse of a character, just a straight beater, likes to whip people around with her hair, has a lot of great positional movement shenanigans. Um, I did, And I just really like the character. Like a lot of these picks are just purely because they're characters that I super enjoy in the comics. And to me, that's the most compelling reason to put them on a squad because I want to play with them more. I want to make my own stories with them and I, I just want to have an opportunity to paint them again. So, so we have Medusa. Uh, Gamora is another one. I really, really enjoyed designing Gamora. Uh, she was, her and the Guardians were just a lot of fun to kind of put on paper and figure out how they worked in the game. Uh, I like her high risk, high reward play style. Um, I also like risky things. Uh, if you watched the mini stravaganza development panel, we talked a little bit about kind of like our ideal game setups and what we enjoy out of games. And I'm definitely one of those people. I have no problem if my if my crazy zany super weapon only works, you know, 40% of the time, or even 30% of the time. As long as when it fails, it does something spectacular. Because um, I'm really in it more for like the hilarity and the story than I am anything else. Uh, Gamora doesn't have a lot of hilarity to her, but she's definitely one of those characters that is very high risk, high reward. Um, when when Gamora gets in there and gets to do her thing, it's absolutely devastating. Uh, there's a lot of counterplay to that, and smart players will work against that. But I think that just makes the the payoff, the satisfaction of when you do, you know, build that right team and you can deliver in there, all the more satisfying to me. Because efficiency is good, and I want to build towards efficiency to some extent. But I also just want to, you know, build awesome lists that do cool things and, and have a lot of fun. Uh, so Gamora, and I, I haven't painted a Gamora since, like, way back before the game even released. That was the last time I painted Gamora. I actually painted Gamora before the game officially launched to the public. So it's been a long time uh, since I had a chance to put a paintbrush on a Gamora. And I always meant to do another one again... I've seen so many cool ones in the community that really inspired me to be like, oh, I, I need to go back. I love that space armor design uh, from the comics, and I was really happy that was the one we went with for the game. So I'm I'm just I'm just jazzed to get to paint a Gamora again, and uh, and of course you know Taskmaster. I I can't say like easily one of my favorite characters in Marvel. Uh, I think the Amazing Spider-Man run where he and Black Ant are partners in crime and kind of the comedic duo is amazing. I love Taskmaster's range 
in terms of being kind of a silly villain character who's there for the laughs or a very serious and dangerous comic book character who like poses a threat to anybody who wants based on what the story needs and all that i think his power set is really cool and he was definitely one of those characters that personally um was really satisfying to bring into the game because his power set is so unique and challenging you know here's a character who copies the moves of everyone else and well you know narratively that's really easy you're just like oh yeah he just copies their moves um doing that in a tabletop game is ridiculously complex to make sure the rules work and all of the interactions are balanced and stuff so i was really really proud and happy with where we wound up with on that character design based on kind of my initial draft to pagani and how we worked out the the issues and and everything and and again just a fun character and an amazing sculpt uh, and I'm really looking forward to getting to paint another Taskmaster, honestly, uh, in a different way. Maybe we'll maybe we'll go with some purples. I've seen a lot of really cool purple-inspired uh, versions of him, so that could be really fun as well. The Alt Axe Hand, if I had it, I would show it to you, but I don't have it, so I can't show it to you, unfortunately. Uh, whoop, I realized that we put the graphic up and we didn't do this. There we go. Look at that. There's the graphic that I was talking about. Oh, yeah. I have, I have that crossbones. Where is it? Here it is. So here's the crossbones with the sweet blaster on his back. Um, all, all this is, this is just the extra gun that comes with cable. So I just took the, I just took the spare cable gun because you can either give cable the cloak or you can give him the uh, the back gun and leave the cloak off. And so I just took the extra gun and I just stuck it on the back of my crossbones and called it good. It was good enough to give him that that explosion blaster gun, um, which came out really well. All right, so that red's looking really good. I'm pretty happy with that. I think we're going to go in and uh, we will pull on the graphics. So, all right, so what are we thinking here? Chat, what do we have? We got Hulk, we got Bob. Yes, yes. Luke Cage. Uh, Luke Cage is pretty strong, pretty strong. Team Dallas does have better bumper music, but we'll compete with them in other ways. Zemo. Oh, I love I love me some Zemo. I was really I was very tempted to put Zemo into uh, into that initial five, but uh, I I just I didn't. I went I went a different way. Maybe it was the right way, maybe it was the wrong way, I don't know. Okay, so we have a really good kind of flat red going on. I think I am going to do a little bit of shading on it, though. So to do that, I'm going to grab some violet ink, some crimson ink. I'm going to mix them together to make kind of a nice darker color. And we're just going to kind of wash this into our mini. I'm going to thin it out pretty good, too, with some water because I want this to kind of pull around. Mysterio, Mysterio. Okay, so I do have to say... The rule is is that it has to be a it has to be currently released. So all the all the new spider foes, our carnage here, they're all out. We can't none of that, none of that. So unfortunately, um, we'll we'll have to wait. That'll be challenge number two. So it's got oh, it's got to be um, it's got to be miniatures that are already released, characters that are already out. And I just made a huge mess, which is cool. That's okay. The little cap wasn't on that one when I shook it. Oh no. Pause the show while we clean up our paint mess. My hands will just be really blue now. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. We'll be all right. Oh, yeah. It's all right. There we go. My hands are just going to be a little blue. You know, for as many streams as we've done, the fact that that hasn't happened yet is pretty amazing. Okay. Back on track. Are delayed models <laughs> miniatures count as release? Um, they have to be. I, I don't know. You'd have to talk to BK about that. So that's a that's a good question. I don't know where the uh, where the count counts. I think it has to be currently currently in a store globally. Let's say that. Let's go with that. Currently in a store globally. Uh, so I'm just going to take this really darker wash and I'm just going to start like kind of pooling it into the cracks and the crevices. Again, I thinned this out pretty good with water because I just want it to flow into the deep recesses 
uh, here on our carnage just to add that extra level of contrast over our reds I'm trying to make sure that it doesn't tint the bright areas as much but mostly just gets into those cracks and those crevices to really shade up so you know I but yeah it's Punisher Punisher storms uh, I mean I, I don't know if storm I like storm a lot uh, I'm not entirely sure what role she brings given you know that leadership isn't gonna come into play I guess she could be my my range character I do lack I lack I lack good ranged options right now for sure I, you can tell I like to stab things um, But I think crisis-wise, I mean, I don't know what the final roster looks like. But my favorite crisis, crises, crises, criso, uh, however you want to say it. I, I mean, hammers is always a great one, especially if you like to, you know, fight people because you get you get the extra the extra die on attacks. So pretty good. Um, I think it would be an even better one if we wind up unaffiliated. Like if we just don't. If Team Schick just doesn't run an affiliation, there's no leader in it at all, uh, Hammers is better because I feel like you don't miss out as much on the tactic cards unaffiliated. And certain affiliations really want those tactic cards. Uh, like I think Brotherhood suffers a lot when they can't use their tactic cards as effectively. Black Order is another one. Um, so I could, I could see us bringing Hammers. Uh, Spider Infected is certainly a good one depending on our final makeup. Um, like Spider Infected in Dallas and I's game last week absolutely had an impact on Magneto's efficiency because you you know if you wind up in a small in a small character count team with a lot of big hitters and they they have slow movement or whatever they pick up a Spider Infected and now you can kind of reposition them around the map half the time pull them out of position make them waste actions oh we've seen a maybe a center of Viper here look at this Keep negotiating with him, chat. You'll get there. You'll get there. Keep going with it. Killmonger? I love a Killmonger. I like Kiplinger, though. I like, like Rudolph Kiplinger. We'll just get in there. Get crazy. Why not? Why not? Yeah, I'm, all, I'm all in on Killmonger. I love me a Killmonger. No one's no one's brought up. Uh... Well, I'm a little surprised. I thought maybe we'd see a little more. Like we, I saw a rocket. Rocket, another really good blaster choice. Gives me, gives me that two threat too, which we're kind of missing right now. I thought about putting in uh, Corset Black Widow into the initial five, but decided against it. Uh, just wasn't a. I've, I've painted a couple of her now, and just wasn't a character that I was like super jazzed to go paint again. So I thought, you know, I'd leave it to the masses to decide if we get any two-pointers. Angela, oh, bringing out the big guns. Uh, I would not complain if the chat decided to give me an Angela, for sure. I mean, I, I think, you know, you can definitely utilize... I've utilized Rocket without Groot before. They are certainly a power couple. Um, so I think... You know, if if the if the masses deem it so, we might get a rocket and a Groot combo. But I wouldn't hold my breath, to be honest. Like I, I'm kind of assuming that if we get one, we don't get the other. Kingpin really solid. I mean, all of these choices I find are excellent so far. I have, I have no complaints about any of them. But yeah, what other crises would I probably take? Um, I'm not a huge Wakanda Nerms fan. I know, travesty. Um, but I don't also don't think that this roster is going to wind up being built to maximize its efficiency. Uh, I really like I really like the senator uh, scenario, which we did play on stream not too long ago. I think that scenario is really fun. The uh, the one the our, the uh, mutant madman sets traps downtown one, which is kind of like a throw to arcade, which we also played on stream last week. I think that one's pretty cool. Uh, really like Origin Bombs, to me, is a really great one. Anytime you can get them across the line. 
Ghost Rider. Oh my gosh, I've painted two Ghost Riders, but I would paint another Ghost. I would paint a third Ghost Rider in a second. Ghost Rider is my boy. If if he is in any kind of like video game experience, number one pick, like right away. Even over a Wolverine or a Spider Man. If Ghost Rider's there, I mean, who doesn't want to be a crazy flaming skull dude on a motorcycle? It's amazing. Lizard. I mean, Lizard would be cool, but no, we're not there. Breaks the rules, chat. Breaks the rules. Yeah, what other crises do we want? Uh, I mean, if the... I'd say Terra Genesis Clouds could be good, but it would really come down to... It would really come down to the, the kind of like the final makeup of the team and the roster, because you, you do want a lot of poison immune if you can get it to really maximize the benefit of kind of hindering your opponent with poison but not yourself uh, portals downtown the demon one come up and come do that one could be pretty cool just deal with the incinerate but of course that's really it's a potent one if you're playing a lot of like heavy hitters. Because you can maximize the loss of the incinerate on your opponent. Ideally, maybe better than they can, depending on if they're like playing a Web Warriors team or something like that. You can definitely play around it. So there's a lot of fun. A lot of fun options there. Yeah, but I don't know, like maybe maybe something crazy happens and BK is like, well. You're taking these you're taking these rosters and now you're going to be playing against Will Pagani insane version Thanos ultimate encounter and I just be like well good game folks we came and uh, the universe is doomed we don't know we don't know what kind of game we're gonna play yet we just know we're playing a game with these rosters so the sky's the limit you know it could be a vibranium heist it could be uh, it could be a separation anxiety, like, who knows? It could be the Hulk ultimate encounter, like, Ultron, it, it could be anything. So we kind of have to plan for all of the zaniness, because if I know one thing about BK, it's that he took lessons from the man, the myth, the legend, Josh Cologne, and Josh's biggest superpower was always the ability to throw a monkey wrench in anything. So you just never know. You just never know what what those two will do. White vision, is that any different than normal vision? Or are we just are we are we just painting vision white? Is that the is that the desire here? Well you can do a white vision. Dallas did an amazing way back when, back when we were still doing these shows in the studio together, uh, in the in the before times. Dallas did an incredible white vision with like magma undertone, like body glow. It was incredible. It was so good. Uh, I would totally just steal that vision from him and say I painted it. So I'm just going through with black and kind of blocking out really carefully all these little symbiote goo lines. <laughs> And then we'll go back through and we will use a bit of abyssal blue and probably some arctic blue. We'll just highlight up these blacks, but I'm pretty happy with where the red wound up. So it's good we have something to talk about right now because this is pretty much just our life for a while. And there'd be different ways to approach this too. Like um, you could do, Dallas and I were talking about this before the stream. And his plan on his carnage is to do the black lines first. So Zenith Prime, black lines, and then wash the red over it, because the black obviously will be too powerful for the red wash to overtake. But it will become, you know, that red will still act as a filter over the black, and so the black, the black little symbiote lines will have that red tinge to them. And I think that could be really cool. Um, for me, I wanted to do it this way because I wanted that orange, that orange-yellow undertone. 
process and um, I want the black lines to be really cool so that they pop. So by using that blue, that black blue kind of coloring for it, it will really create a temperature difference between the really hot reds and then this really more sickly, slimy black symbiote. And I think it'll create a really cool contrasty effect and it'll look really nice. So that's kind of where we are. I need to pause for a second. You see where the conversation is going here. Oh, we got some lockjaw. I mean, lockjaw. That little pupper dog is everybody's best friend. So, not only is he totes adorbs. Uh, Chet is correct in that many of these characters that we've already talked about are big, big fans of our little puppers, lockjaw in terms of what he allows them to accomplish based on what they want to do. So, Black Dwarf? Oh, I like it. Bringing in the Dark Horse. Yes, chat. Yes. Let's get Black Dwarf. Let's get big chunky boy Black Dwarf on the table. Let's make it work. He'll just be there to take the punches. We've got characters to give punches. Black Dwarf can take the punches. I think the I think we take Black Dwarf. We got to take Extreme Conditioning, because otherwise, uh, I love Black Dwarf, and I think he has a lot of awesome play. But he needs he needs some movement help. He's got. He either needs himself a Lockjaw, or you know, like a Red Skull, some kind of. Some kind of good movement shtick shenanigans to get him where he wants to be, because that boy doesn't move super fast. That's just, that's not his life. He doesn't do cardio. He's a power lifter. He's not, he's not interested in like doing any kind of, any kind of like even speed walking. That's not his life. That's not what he does. I like the Black Dwarf though. I suppose the other question that we have, nobody's brought it up yet, but... Yeah, how do our how do our infinity gems count here? They probably can't take them. I think they're they're probably out. Maybe you can take them attached to a character, but the character always has to have them for this, because you know the goal is to paint ten characters, and you can't paint an infinity gem. So we'll figure that out if anybody if anybody votes for that. We'll see how that works. But yeah, I'm all I'm all in on black dwarf. Let's do it. So far, not a single not a single option has been like, oh, that that sounds terrifying. I like them all. I'm seeing the story in my head. It's happening. Look at these claws in black. I kind of feel like I should have just left them red, but that's okay. We're doing it now. Oh, Ebony Maw. See, Simone, but Atomic Mass employees uh, cannot enter this contest. So, well, you love Ebony Maw. And I'm right there with you. I had taken Ebony Maw. Um, your votes don't count. You get actually negative votes. Black Order is amazing. Like, uh, I am a huge fan of, of course beating people up and Black Order do that fantastically so I did for a hot moment think about in my initial five doing my favorite power couple uh, which is Pro Corvus and Proxima we talked about I don't remember which stream it was but I have this really oh it was during the gameplay stream where I was playing Sin and Crossbones and having the time of my life I love villainous power couples because you get this like really sweet dichotomy of these people who are just awful individuals with you know really weird moral compasses, but yet they're completely devoted to each other and you know nurturing and caring to each other, and they have this healthy relationship. 
that none of the heroes can seem to imagine, <laughs> like manage in their lives. And I, to me, that's just so great. It just makes it all better. So Corvus and Proxima are my jam, but I wanted to I wanted to do some stuff that I haven't that normally I wouldn't really have the opportunity to do, and I have done uh, a couple of Corvuses and Proximas over the time. So I figured let's let's get take the opportunity to do something different. Plus, I felt like it was too leading, you know. Once you get Corvus and Proxima in there, it's like, well, I guess you better take Black Order. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. That's true, but at the same time, I want I want this to be a collaboration between, you know, these five initial picks and then everybody out there picking the destiny of this team. It can be whatever we all want it to be. We're going to make it cool. We're going to have some fun. We're going to tell a neat story over the course of the month. Get it painted. Oh my gosh. No. Made a mistake. That's okay. I'm just going to blend it away. No one will ever see it anyway. Spoilers for characters you want. Yes, you're prohibited, Simone. Stop using your power for personal gain. This is not the way of the head of studio. Do do do. This is this is the exciting part about Carnage. Just taking your time, going slow, keeping that black paint really loose. Again, I think there are certainly ways that you could approach this a little quicker. You could also just leave them red. Like a really quick dry brush of, say, an orange red. Some good uh, red highlight that you really like. And you could just kind of pop them out as like an orange and then they'll just look little striations in his costume. The black, to be honest, um, uh, kind of black detailing and stuff. It's not necessary for a carnage but it looks really cool. So it's it's an effect worth it. There's not a whole lot else to do on this guy. Uh, he is fairly simple outside of this, and it's a really great way to practice brush control and work on your lining and all that stuff. So I always like miniatures that let you kind of work a technique or practice at something. And uh, these lines are nice and very raised. The engineers did a really great job on making them very easy to pick out with the side of the paintbrush and stuff. It kind of just lets you practice that really important skill of brush control and lining and all that good stuff. <coughs> How many Ma would use his power for personal gain and has many times? Oh, do 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 do. That's right, chat. I'm with you. I'm with you. I feel you. Alright, so I'm just kind of going here. I'm trying to think, like, what other crises would I somewhat be drawn to? Paint his little toesies black. You always go with the safe bets, you know, Extremis. Extremis is pretty good. Uh, Infinity uh, formula is pretty good. Those are definitely catch-all kind of secure objectives. They largely benefit everyone. So you can feel pretty safe with them. Nothing super spicy, but I think that's kind of, you know, the place where we got to go right now because we don't know what the team's going to be. Let's kind of plan on the basics. There's, of course, the power overload option where you take, uh, you hope for infinity, infinity fragments and, uh, and extreme, er, and infinity formula. 
cosmic cube fragments and infinity formula so you can just get all the power ever there are definitely characters that uh, really love to see that I don't know if we'll have any of them but you never know you never know Doop. Uh, the one, the brush that I'm using now is a size three. Normally, I use a size two. Oop. But the one I'm using is a size three, and it's just a Windsor Newton Series Seven, size three. Uh, but yeah, it's got a really great point on it, and of course, the belly's super nice, which is good for doing stuff like this because I'm not having to go back to the well super often. My paint is staying nice and nice and loose and wet, uh, and it's got that magic, that magical point to it, so it's going pretty well. Yeah, it's great. It's actually a brand new one. I just opened it over the weekend. So exciting times! Whoop! Just make that little mistake go away. There we go. All right, <clears throat> there are like so many lines, but I think we might just instead focus a little bit more on the front. So we'll just pretend that we'd finished all our lines. Let's go back to the front, which is pretty close to done. So what I'm going to do, if we're going to do a quick, assuming that we had finished all of this black, which we haven't, but we're close, uh, well, let's move on just really quick. So I'm going to grab some Abyssal Blue, and then mix in a little bit of Arctic Blue. I'm just looking for kind of a nice, obviously with how fine these lines are we're not really looking to uh, do any kind of like crazy smooth blending or anything we just want to get that we just want to get that kind of like spot highlight going on here so I'm just gonna kind of come in and then every so often bring my brush over some of the black and just like little strokes try not to get it into the deepest recesses to give it a little bit of that punch and pop so this will really help separate out those dark lines even more in the suit. I'm give that extra a little bit. So we're just looking to really create a lot of contrast. And really these could just be, in some places, they can just be like little dots of color, especially when we get to the really bright colors, because we're going to add a little bit more Arctic blue into this here in a second. Um, when it comes to like the nails and stuff, or the talons, his nails, ah, it's so not scary when you call them nails. Uh, when you get to his talons, yes, his, his very scary talons, um, just start like at the bottom, go about halfway up the talon, and then let it wait from there. Um, and that will take care of that first part. And then as we add more color, you can do that again, and you can kind of create a really quick and easy blend for uh, any kind of bone or striated material. So if we were just doing like them as a normal bone color, you'd start with say a ruck, um, uh, uh, brown kind of ochre, some kind of yellowish ochre color, uh, or a really light, you know, kind of like leather brown. And then you would come back in and you would do your bone color, your off-white, like yellow, your yellow white, and then you'd highlight that up with more and more like off-white, pure white, and the goal is to just kind of do really rough striations and stuff, and then that will 
help bring everything out. And see where that's going on. So that would be our first step. And we're just gonna like cruise right along here because I do wanna kind of show this whole process. But really, um, once we're to that point, we're basically done. So I'm just gonna add more and more Arctic blue into this color to kind of brighten it up to the point that I'm happy. You could go pure Arctic blue if you wanted to. If you really wanted to get like that pure glint of light uh, on and make it look really slimy and slick. So this will, the more kind of pure highlight color you get to that point, the more it will look really slick and gross because it'll look wet. I'm having those little spot highlights. And because it's such a small area, you know, the more extreme you go, the easier it's going to be for the eye to catch it. Kind of see here, hopefully how now we're really starting to pop those lines out with that color. I'm still maintaining some of the black underneath. And this is, it's really about less is more. It can be really tempting to kind of want to go through and redo all the line work. But one, oh my gosh. It takes long enough to do the black line work. And while that can be really enjoyable and zen-like, uh, don't do it again. You don't need to. The eye will kind of meld those colors together for you. So you can just kind of go in and just do little half lines or dots. Pulls across. Let that really start to pop out. So now you can see how we're getting that really nice differentiation in there. And then for like the talons, we are talking about before, just come in and again just kind of like go halfway up your halfway and if you want to you can grab that other brush and you can blend it back out mm -hmm. we just want it to be lighter at the tip and darker at the base so you can just play with that and of course if you want to you can go in and you can like add little striation effects. You can paint little lines on there and stuff. It's all very possible to do, but we're not gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna go in and do this. So just more Arctic blue, getting pretty close to kind of a 60-40 mix, I think. I just want to add in those little glints of color. It's really just kind of pop. Those little tendrils out. So you can see how. You go too much you ruin the effect so it is really about kind of controlling the application of the amount but it's this last little highlight that will really take everything over the edge so this is where your light is really reflecting off the surface like even though I've been doing it from the bottom up on the nails with this like curved nail you know this little edge of the nail would be like right there in the light so we're gonna do that okay, through here Those. So there we go so you can see how that's all coming through really together Looking really good you just got to make the shake work for you chat I'm I'm not particularly the steadiest either um, but you know, it's, it's about having your arms braced. So my arms are braced against the armrests of my chair, which are level with my desk. And then just kind of letting the paint and the brush do the work for you and not fighting them. All right, so we're going to come in, we're going to do one last really minimal highlight of pure Arctic blue. 
and then just want to like come in. Just a little bit. There we go. So we're just gonna look for those little places where we want those dots of shiny reflective light. And this is again just kind of like all made up there's no right or wrong answer to it just keep it keep it minimal that black be the primary color underneath you just want to create a little contrast by highlighting it up now, honestly you could skip every other step if you wanted to if you wanted to keep it really black and you could just do the super fine like line highlight of this arctic blue because pure black is defined by its highlight so if it's really really like super slick black it would just have a little bit of glint you can see there on like the claw how we did that just along the line and you could keep it really really dark if you wanted to there we go that process just repeated over and over and over again until you have, you know, our red is basically done. Uh, let's do the eyeball really quick. Just so we can kind of get a sense of what this character will look like after we apply these techniques to everything else. So I'm just grabbing a little off-white. Uh, this is white sands. I'm just going to come in. Just dot this color to the eyeball just to really pick it out. And then, if we want to go a little further, we can grab a little bit of pure white, mix that in, and add that to the eyeball. But I'm pretty happy with that different contrast. So, it's kind of the start of the front of our carnage. Again, our reds are basically all done in about three steps. Uh, the blacks and the lining is another just three step process so black with a highlight with another spot highlight uh, the talons are the same way so you can get a carnage painted really effectively looking really good very quickly here's the back side that we haven't quite finished but we'll get to that so there we go all right and with that we will jump over to this next screen which is right here so thank you very much for joining me, chat. Uh, I hope you guys all had a very wonderful experience. Hope you had fun. I'm looking forward to seeing who won in the chat. I saw several of the suggestions. I'm very excited. Uh, I think all the characters that were mentioned, I would be more than happy to add to Team Schick and our Core 5. Uh, again, watch our Instagram uh, account for some polls that are going to, be, going to be going up to choose the seventh character for my roster uh, and for Dallas's roster. And of course, be sure to tune in at 1 p.m. Pacific on Thursday to find out who Team Dallas and his core five are uh, for this big challenge. And of course, to vote within the chat for his number six slot, and then later on on Instagram for his number seven slot. Uh, and we will be back picking more characters as we move into the month of May, but all of this is kicking off in May. Uh, it's gonna be a crazy wild month. We're gonna get a lot of cool painting done. And at the end of it, we're gonna have some rosters to put on the gaming table in one way or another. I'm excited to see what that's gonna look like for Mr. BK. Uh, of course, we are back tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific for some gaming. Uh, we're gonna be playing some games at 1 p.m., myself and Michael Plummer. And then you can join John Safer on Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific as we round out our week of streaming for hobby content and gaming content now. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. I look forward to seeing you back here each day at 1 p.m. Pacific. Until then, take care, have fun, game on, be good to each other, and goodbye.